Hello traders, it's your boy Capital L and we're here for a week midweek review of our currencies. If you're new to the midweek review, welcome. If you're not, welcome again. Uh, feel free to hit the subscribe and like button if you find any value in this. Hopefully our midweek review could help you and uh, your trades and your results uh, moving forward. With that being said, let's get right into it. It is Wednesday evening, October 1st. And uh, we're looking at our currencies. We got some changes, some 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 pretty decent changes, uh, mixing up our, our biases moving into this week so far. As you know, uh, in the beginning of the week, we were looking for uh, uh, actually a strong CAD. Just give me a second. Actually, I'm gonna pull up that analysis right now. Here we go. So we were looking for a strong dollar. And the strong CAD, with the weaker currencies being the yen, Australian dollar, and New Zealand dollar. I'm actually just going to take you through a through a through my week, and uh, so you can see exactly what's going on. Starting off the week, we had uh, trades from our previous uh, review uh, that are favored shorts to the uh, on the Australian dollar. So, with that being said. As you can see, uh, the Australian dollar was actually, uh, you know, one of our A pairs, um, with, the, with the dollar being the strongest and the yen being the weakest. Towards the beginning of the week, we were looking to definitely uh, pair those up, and also the strongest with uh, some of the, you know, more emerging weaker currencies, such as the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar. Uh, we had trades in it from before I was in the trade. Uh, I had a short which uh, came down to the take profit. It worked pretty well. Uh, nothing, nothing too, too, too great. Well, it was great, you know, the nice, good three to one, which is always nice. But uh, you know, it's, it's nice to see things going in our direction. Moving forward, this is, uh, I believe, this is uh, Monday night. Uh, the key, you know, just some of our sentiment updates. Uh, news on New Zealand wasn't looking too good from the Reserve Bank. Uh, dollar, you know, still showing showing good news on dollar, and um, you know that's that's pretty much in agreement with our with our sentiment, you know, thus far. And this is uh, yeah, Monday morning, excuse me, Monday morning at 5 a.m. This is uh, Eastern time, my time, New York Eastern time. So this was just some of the sentiment as we were looking. Um, as you know, the New Zealand uh, took a, a, a huge dive in the beginning of the week. Um, and uh, right at the market open, actually, and uh, you know, which was great. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't able to get into a trade on that, you know, with that. But uh, it was nice to see that it's moving actually in, in in our bias direction, which is always a good confirmation. Moving on to Monday night, some uh, updates to the sentiment came out. Uh, some good news: dollar growth. You see, you see big, big words there that's uh, sticking out. Uh, Japan and uh, Europe is flatter, which is uh, kind of in favor of our, our bias as well. So just some some overall good uh, good uh, sentiment that's agreeing with our bias uh, moving into Monday night. So I, I got into a short on the euro. Uh, this is a Monday right here. I seen a pullback uh, to one of the levels we were looking at, and I entered on uh, Campbell's candle entry. Got a short, which uh, worked out pretty well for me. I'm actually still in that, um, but it's working out pretty well. Um, also got into a short in the uh, Euro CAD. I had a pending trade there. So this was overnight. I was actually sleeping at this time. Um, got into a trade. As when I woke up, price looking at it, price was uh, starting to pull back. Tuesday morning, this is when I, you know, woke up and uh, seen the previous screenshots, seeing uh, just the updates on the sentiment, you know, continuing to be in our favor for a weak euro. Nothing else for really uh, sticking out right here with regard to the pairs that we're trading. And at this time, my focus is still the yen, the CAD, and the dollar, and Australian and New Zealand as well. So then, uh, 
on Tuesday we got that news out on the uh, Canadian dollar. GDP numbers came out negative. Now uh, I had a strong outlook on the CAD, um, and after doing some 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 more research, I really found that even though technically, you know, technically on the charts, our Canadian dollar is looking strong against our other pairs, fundamentally it was getting weaker. And uh, this is the confirmation right here. So we got a we got a, a sentiment update. Boom. Canada's economy unexpectedly stalls. Canada's uh, GDP little changed. Words like that, things like that, more time is needed. Things like that stand out as, uh, you know, word, things that's going to weaken. That's weak sentiment on the currency right there. And as you can see, this is the position that, you know, I was in at the time. And, you know, this is how it worked out uh, on the CAD yen. I was in the long from uh, last week, actually, still. So still holding on to that long trade on a nice uh, reversal right there. And uh, price never came down. But uh, this was the close. This is how the candle was forming after the news. And uh, as you can see in my notes here, I was uh, considering closing half and uh, resetting a buy, you know, to, to give me further confirmation that price wanted to move up to our level up here. But with that new sentiment coming out, you know, I still had an overall bias. Because I understand that one report doesn't really make the currency. But uh, after doing some further in investigation, um, I seen that, you know, there's a, a weak outlook on the ca a Canadian dollar. And... Uh, you know, this news right here really, even though it is unexpected, but it, it really wasn't a surprise, though, if, if, if I could say that. So this is, this any anytime you get sentiment like this, it's always a good thing to really, like, take a look at your positions that you got right now on that particular currency. And uh, if it's a real strong report, you definitely may want to make some adjustments, as I did. And um, I actually did make this management adjustment on other accounts, but uh, for this account in particular that I'm showing you, I just wanted to hold it. Uh, being that the yen is weak still, and some weak news came out on on uh, on the yen earlier in the week as well. Uh, I feel as if, even though this is a blow to the Canadian dollar, this pair in particular would be the last to really reverse so if it's going to stall and move sideways uh, and then eventually move up this is the pair that it's most likely going to do it on so i decided to hold it you know and uh i also was decided to take a look at it and foresee what was coming out later in the week and on friday you can see we had the trade we got some trade balance numbers coming out and, and it's forecasted to be you know, weaker, you know, to further the weakenings of the CAD. So with that being said, with that being said, you know, uh, this position is really looking like it's going to have to, you know, we got to start to make some adjustments on this position. And uh, this was, this is really how, how you know, right here from, uh, from your sentiment updates. So with that being said, um, later later on in the, in the week, uh, Tuesday night, we got uh, some more positive sentiment on the on the dollar and uh, some negative sentiment on the on the Australian dollar, uh, which is both in agreement with our sentiment. So which is which is great. Um, I was also in the position on the Australian CAD, being that the outlook on the CAD with the CAD was strong, um, as you can see. Uh, when we got that weak news, uh, GDP numbers, uh, price started to reverse on that Australian CAD. And then we got weak numbers, uh, on weak retail sales numbers on the uh, Australian dollar, which uh, causes prices to push push back down. And I just wanted to take a screenshot of that price action. I, I got into a short trade up here uh, in this zone. I was looking for a reversal. And... Uh, you know, it's really supporting our position. I'm looking to take it down into this area right here and uh, just see what happens.
And that's pretty much where we're at today. To give you, you know, just the background, you know, of a week. This is, this has been a very, very adventurous week right here. And, uh, you know, with all the moves and different changes in sentiment and different things, um, it uh, causes some trend changes. And, uh, you know, we, we got a big update, you know, uh, update to our pairs that we're looking at now. So with regard to the other positions that I got in the Australian CAD, CAD Yen, <clears throat> I'm going to manage those. I'm going to manage those. And I uh, actually uh, took a loss on the CAD Yen, I believe. And uh, I'm still up. We, we, we're going to look at the charts in a minute. But I still, I, still, I still got some positions on the Euro CAD and the Australian CAD, and I'm going to manage those uh, to see if I can decrease any potential uh, uh, losses from that. And uh, because now we got a change in sentiment. And uh, from our new uh, outlook on trend directions, uh, the pairs that we want to focus on uh, at, that are the strongest is still a dollar and now the pound as well. And for the weakest, we got the update of the Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar as the weakest, uh, the yen being uh, the next weakest. Uh, I'm gonna stay away from the yen. I got positions as well in the, in the dollar yen that I'm managing as well. So um, with regard to any new positions, these are the currencies that we wanna look on. For long positions, we wanna look on the pound Australian dollar and the pound uh, New Zealand dollar. For sure positions, these are really like our, our A positions. If there's any ones you want to trade, you want to look at these. is the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar. And, uh, you know, so it's first our A positions, our second positions, secondary, and then uh, this is a C, which I will call C, you know, if you want to uh, look into some more. Uh, the Euro pound and uh, the Euro dollar to the short side as well. Um, it's just still a weak sentiment on the Euro. So I think it's always a, a great uh, pair to uh, still uh, pull some pips out of against uh, some of the stronger pairs. So with that being said, definitely want to focus on the pound Australian dollar, pound New Zealand dollar. Those are new additions. And uh, put these uh, Australian dollar and uh, New Zealand dollar into the spotlight a little bit more. We're going to uh, pull it over to the charts now. As you can see, we're on the Australian dollar here, on the Australian dollar four hour. I'm actually... Uh, gonna pull it down to an hour so we can see more of this price action where we may uh, we may get some act you know get a play out of I'm gonna look for uh, I want to see a test of these highs for a reversal possibly back down to this purple area here that's what I'm gonna be looking for As we continue, moving over to the New Zealand dollar. New Zealand's been really on the run. Let's see, I'm just trying to zoom it in a little bit for you guys. Break it down to hours as well. For me personally, and this was actually a zone I was targeting. It's right there. Um, for me, I would like to see like possibly a break of this low right here before anything. Um, I may do a pull, a pull up trade into there and uh, possible to target something like this down there. So it's looking like I may, you know, a good a good position for me, 132, about 227. That's some that's potential, but uh, I'm gonna sit back on it now until I see some some further price action. Typically, I would like to see it uh, test these highs again and then take off, but I think uh, it actually made the run already right here. So, um, but I, I would like to definitely see it break, and, uh, or or a possible break and then come back and test to the downside as well. That that'll be even better position. Look at some of the, the newer pound or trillion dollar here. Just 
some zones that I'm looking at. If we go to the daily, we can see that we had some uh, resistance over here previously. Price uh, came came up to it, bounced, broke through it, came test off, you know, bounced again, came down. But just a little bit of resistance zone right here, which I like. And uh, price action is actually setting up for a strong, it's looking like a strong reversal to the downside. So um, our bias is to the long side on this. So if we're really going to be looking for any positions, for me personally, It'll be down here, which would be optimal. A test of these lows. Or a test of these lows down here. If we could get like a reversal candle off of these lows, I may look to continue to take this, continue to take this to the upside up here. For so if we can get a reversal candle, say we got a reversal candle right there, get about 90 pips to 2, 250, that's a, that's a good position right there. Our bias is to the upside, so we definitely just want to keep our eyes open for possible entries. Now once again, I just want to let you know, guys, this is what I'm going to be doing. Um, this is not trade recommendations. Um, I just really want to give you the best pairs to focus on moving into the next few days. And uh, the next pair here we got is the Pound New Zealand. If we zoom out, let's uh, take it to the weekly. You can see that this is a resistance zone here, and it's looking like price is pulling off. So we may want to wait for another pullback into this zone down here. to here very extreme into here which is not really likely in my opinion or a breakout once we get some closes above there breakout and a pullback that's 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 more likely you know which would be a great 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 position we'll be looking to move to the upside you know we got we got ooh, Thousand pips, thousand pips to our to our next destination, which is uh, these highs up here. So if we were to break, get some closes out there, pull back. We get a nice, a nice position right there to the upside. But we may want to, may have to wait for a pullback first. So we just gotta see how price works out. Taking it a step further to the to the to the to the four hour. We could definitely see prices break out and pull back off of these highs. But uh, more likely, it's actually, it's likely that we see a pull back down here into this zone. Pull back into our green zone like we drew. And then uh, for some further action to the upside. Moving on to our uh, euro dollar. As I mentioned, I was in the position here, which worked out pretty good. Still holding on. I'm gonna hold it to the end of the week. We got some news coming out on the euro, which is We got some news coming out in the Euro. Bid rate coming out tomorrow. The press conference is really probably gonna push it uh, more than a bid rate. 
So I'm gonna hold it because I'm expecting some more negative sentiment. And if that's the case, we could get down to these targets that I'm looking for down here. Which is if we pull it out to the full daily, the weekly. This is a nice weekly area here. So this is why I'm pretty much targeting. They got big targets, big targets, but uh, you know, so far, so far price has confirmed. And last week price moved about 400 pips on the euro just last week alone. Oh man, not 400, but uh, two, 200. Excuse me, it felt like 400. Uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's no, it's no, it's no positive news coming out on the euro, in my opinion, or scheduled to come out, or even looking to come out. So, I'm, I, I still got a short bias on the euro. I still got a short bias on the euro, and last but not least, uh, euro pound, which is a pair focus. Uh, so I just go out to the weekly. <clears throat> weekly is looking like we're we're into these zones right here. Big a big weekly zone that we're we're testing now. Actually, wow, this is we got a couple a couple tests here. Now, fundamentally, fundamentally the euro is weak. The pound is looking like. It's, it's really gaining strength. It's actually a second behind, like like we got technically, it's, it's technically confirming with the fundamentals on this pair. So fundamentally, it's, it's second behind the dollar in a race to raise rates. Euro is uh, cutting rates and going through recession bad news as I, as I continue to, to reiterate. Fundamentally, we should just continue to see this move on down to come and test these lows come and test this area right here our first eye zone right there and then come right on, on down test these lows something like that it's fundamental big trades though big trades Just mark these levels. But uh, it's very likely that we see price sail down. Down, there's nothing, nothing really stopping it. It makes complete sense. So, with that being said, put our targets way down here. In these zones, we can really start to, you know, we can really set ourselves up. If we get a, if we get some a pull back into the zone, I'm looking for a short. So yeah, I just uh, like to set my alerts in that zone. <laughs> Set it above. <laughs> Gotta set it above if you're looking for it. So, I would like to see it test these highs right here. Zoom in. I like to see it test these highs up here. Right up there. And if you give me a reversal candle pattern in there somewhere, most likely gonna take it. So that's what I'm looking for on the Euro pound. So um, hopefully you found this video helpful.
hopefully you found the video helpful. Just to reiterate, we want to focus on these pairs for going long. The pound Australian dollar, pound New Zealand dollar. For short, we want to focus on Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, Euro pound, and Euro dollar. Moving on towards the end of the week. Moving on towards the end of the week. Just definitely continue to keep an eye on the sentiment. Trade your plan. Focus on the process, and the numbers will come. The numbers will definitely come. Um, hopefully, you found this video helpful. If you got any questions, feel free to reach out to me at unitedtradersrg at gmail.com. Please like, subscribe, and uh, shoot me any questions if you got any. Till next time, happy trading.